another episode of Tricer Podcast. This week we have a very smart man, and I say smart because he is a Tricer customer. And uh, Remington McCauley, how are you doing? Good, man. <laughs> Good. How about you today? Oh, I'm doing great, man. I just got back from Sonora. It's my first podcast back. Just hammered some giant bucks down in Sonora, and I just can't wait to go back. I already booked another hunt down there, but uh, excited to talk yeah. to you. We've been trying to get together for two months to talk about this hunt you went on with your nephew. Yeah, no doubt, man. Did you, I didn't see, did you kill some nice deer? I, did, I never saw any pictures of them. Yeah, dude, I shot a, an ancient, probably like an eight, eight and a half year old buck. Last year, he was probably 118. I don't know if you anything about coos deer. Yeah. Anything over 100 is big. I know a little bit about them. Yeah. They had a bad drought down in Sonora. It wasn't really the best year down there, but he ended up coming this year, like 107 and a half. We finally taped him out. But the cool thing about this buck is 31 inches of mass. You can, it's five inches around in one spot of his antler. It's just a massive old buck, which is what I wanted. I wanted an old mature deer and it's I wanted something that deer. was cool. And this buck is a freak. Yeah. He's just a freak buck. They called him chubs. They've been trying to kill him for four years. See, this buck's just been giant. A bunch of really notable coos hunters have been trying to kill this deer and they haven't been able to kill him. And it hasn't been patterning him regularly. And then my first morning ever being in Sonora, this thing came walking in and I hammered him. Oh, it was my target buck and I killed him. And I mean, I was joking. I'm like, I'll be done by nine o'clock. And I kid you not, 8.59, this buck came out of the bushes, stood next to this drinker and I just hammered him. It just, well, it sometimes it worked. Then I had, kill. then I, yeah, then I had <laughs> 10 more days of just like shooting javelina. I killed a coup de Monday. I called dogs. I just had a blast. Now my father-in-law killed a good buck on like day two, I think, maybe day three. And uh, after that, we were just like a bunch of little kids, man, just out there calling dogs and just having a blast down there. It's just, that's, that's like the, it's a uh, special it's place. Like, it's like the real Wild West. It really is. It is the Wild West. It's, they say Alaska's the last frontier. Sonora's very similar. There is mm-hmm. no one, or, you're out there and there's no planes flying over. That's right. one thing I got. Right. I heard the Frank Church and his, Frank Church is incredible. I will, I will go back any year. But there's still planes. Like down there, like you literally are alone. You drive, Mm -hmm. we drive out every day and hunt and just, you didn't see another person. Maybe once in a while a cowboy would come rolling by a couple of times, maybe a ranch dog or something. But other than that, it is the last frontier, man. It is the wild west down there for sure. So it was. Yeah, uh, I I can relate to that. I mean, you're in Alaska, you feel definitely you're remote, but it's even being way out in West Texas. It's just something about it that just, you don't feel like there's any laws or anything to abide by <laughs> you're just there doing doing that country stuff so yeah co- compared to california there are no laws in texas at least that's how we look at it compared to california there are very minimal laws but yeah you're a texas boy right and you're from originally you're in colorado now you're originally from texas correct west yep, texas or yep. no no I'm, i grew up i grew up south of dallas but grew up hunting everything from central texas to Way out west, Arizona, down towards the border, um, hunted all over uh, the whole state, from public land whitetail hunting to private land whitetail hunting, duck hunting, goose hunting. Okay. Just, I, I basically did everything the state had to offer me, and then decided I want some more, a little more challenges, and I didn't want to have to, I wanted to be able to live in it and learn it, gotcha. rather than just being a out-of-stater visitor. You know, to get a call around. Around, eh? Yeah. So with the Texas stuff, because I don't knock it, right? Like at no, some I point either. I want to, some point I want to go do it because everyone's done it. Like I, I want to go down there and kill a nil guy. My friend's going to kill a nil guy mm-hmm. this month. I wanted to go, but I've just been gone way too much. My wife, I got to try and stay married. I have to yep. take a break from hunting at some point in this year. <laughs> but I mean, it, there has to be, there is challenges to it. And there is, you know, they're raising the animals or doing the whole thing. It's a whole different ecosystem they're building down there for these deer. I don't knock it. it it's cool. No. It's an experience. I'd like to go down there with my father-in-law. I'd love to go sit. He's 75 now. I'd love to go sit some feeders and do that whole thing mm-hmm. and just mm-hmm. have the coffee. I still- I, in my mind, I imagine lazy boy, like a chair I'm sitting in right now. I imagine this chair and I'm like sitting in there and there's like a buddy heater. I got a coffee oh, yeah. and I'm... Yep. <laughs> And I'm hunting deer. It's nice. like, that's what I imagine it's in my nice. mind. <laughs> so I still go back every year and hunt. And after August, September, October of here and just, you know, losing 15, 20 pounds and looking like mm-hmm. an Ethiopian, it's nice to go sit in a stand with some eaters and 
eat Twinkies and <laughs> and chill. <laughs> and also, a big part of it is I go back every year because they don't have an age limit for children to kill. You can take a four year old down there, hunt license, get five tags, and they can go hunt. <laughs> right? So, ever since my boy, he was six when he shot his first deer down there. And so we go back every year so that he can have free reign shooting things and practice getting, getting good awesome. at shooting animals. So that way. But the, it's, I think it's spoiled him a little bit, the reality of hunting. It can skew it a little bit because it is a little easier down there unless you're, if you're chasing a a, a giant buck, a giant whitetail, in my opinion, is one of the hardest animals to kill. But it's, unless you're chasing one of those, it's a challenge. The biggest thing with that, my dad likes to make fun of me now because I can't sit still anymore, but you go sit in a tree stand from dust to dawn <laughs> trying to catch a big deer and can't i can't really do that anymore so i lost that little skill i had <laughs> i just yeah this get sonora down and hunt, chase them. this sonora hunt we were sitting water just the ranch we were on it's a desert ranch you cannot glass this ranch and we were talking tall foot tall brush to stickers you can't glass them so we're sitting water and it's highly effective. They used to try and glass and they said they just, after being there for 20 years, they figured out how to hunt these deer and that's how they do it. And that was very different for me sitting in that blind. And again, I thought I was going to sit for 10 days and I killed my buck in the first freaking yeah. two hours of being there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like nine nine oh one, he was dead. And he literally, I shot him and he literally ran 60 yards straight to me and died in front of my blind. <laughs> it's, it's all on video. It's awesome. I'll, I'll yeah. release that at some point. I'm working on getting all together for everybody. Yeah. It's- that's definitely but, a different, a different experience for sure. But I, <laughs> I can say that like I hunted so hard this year on the other hunts, right? We killed elk, we killed deer, we went on an elk hunt. Mm-hmm. I was gone for 14 days. My body was just, I tore my knee up, my left knee real bad on this Arizona elk hunt we went on. I just coming out of hills, I just messed something up yeah. and something, I don't know if I tore it or sprained it, but it just, I, I get back and I go straight into the gym and I work out three to five days a week and I just mm-hmm. wasn't healing and I'll tell you what, like going to Sonora and sitting in a blind for a week, my knee feels incredible. Like I feel like I could do like a box jump now. I could do stuff. Like <laughs> yeah, I was getting on my dirt bike and my knee was killing me on the dirt bike. And now it's like I can go riding again and not have any pain. And so there is something to be said about putting the work in and then having this like, like a, I don't want to call it a dove hunt, but like having this hunt where I could kind of chill and be in the blind when i bought this like they had me buy this giant chair from my sports warehouse it's like it looks like a lazy boy it's just it's incredible <laughs> and you sit in it and you're just sitting in there hanging out and then i'm a talker Chilling. anyways in the blind so like i after i the first morning i killed i had someone filming for me so i was talking to him the whole time and then yeah. after that it was my father and all so i'm just getting to sit in the blind talk a little bit and all of a sudden oh crap there's a javelina and oh, shoot a javelina yeah, yeah. It, it's a different experience versus like where i'm if anyone ever hunts with me, they know that I'll glass from sunrise to sunset and I'll be at that glassing knob in about an hour mm-hmm. before sunrise. Right. And that glassing knob could be three, four miles from our camp, right? Or however far mm-hmm. it is. And so I put in the miles. So it's cool to have this like experience down there and go down there. That's that's what I would describe Sonora as too, is an experience. And I, we went with the guys from Mad Hunts and I've been talking to them a lot. And we're actually, we're booking a ranch next year to go back down, like 10 tags, go back down again next year. And I was telling them, like, you're selling more than a deer hunt is an experience, right? Having this Mexican lady who doesn't speak any English making tortillas for you. And oh, yeah. you know, you're drinking Mexican coffee and you're just, you're on this old ranch that's historical, hundreds of years old, and they're still doing things the old way. And it was cool, man. So, yeah, I'm going to go do Texas. I'm going to do the same thing over there. After this hunt, I'm like, I want to go do that. I want to go over there and experience it. Hell, I might even yeah, go to Africa now. I, I was always out in Africa. Now I'm like, after this, I might just go do it just to kill some stuff. I thought about that. I thought about that. I know the yeah. No, it's its own. It's it's obviously not as physically demanding, but it's it's mental. It's a lot more mental mm-hmm. to me, anyways, because the hiking, however far and doing whatever, like I I kind of thrive off of that and I enjoy it. But the mental strain of just sitting. I did this moose hunt last year in Alberta. And going in, and it was like a 14 day hunt and going into it, I had never done a moose hunt before. So it was my first one and I didn't know what to expect and going into it, I'm thinking it's going to be somewhat physical. And it was that type of thing. You're sitting in these one spots calling day after day and you're just sitting Mm -hmm. and just waiting and just calling and waiting and you're within 500 yards of an area for six days of just sitting in this one area. And I was 
it's it's mentally tasking for sure to be able to just sit there and, and take that. So I have a lot of, I have a lot of respect for those serious whitetail hunters that really put in that work and that time. And it's I I would never knock it. It's just as much my 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 style anymore. Yeah, and I want to hear about Alberta now too because you cut you told me you want to talk about your kids thing, but I want to hear about Alberta now because you went to that's awesome. I want to hunt moose. Something to be said about when you went there and you guys called and you sat there. The reason you guys did that is because it's effective, right? And right. so many times we will do things while hunting, not because it's effective, but because we just want to change. So we'll, we'll right. hike over here. Let's go to this ridge. Let's go to this ridge. And I'll right. tell you what, I have a much bigger respect now for sitting blinds over water from that hunt. And I've killed, I killed my first bull over water. You know, I hunted mm -hmm. for six days, didn't mm -hmm. see an elk. All of a sudden, the last night, I sat water for the first time, and I freaking killed the only elk I saw, and he died. So this year, actually, my strategy for, man, I'll talk about whatever. My strategy for yeah. Arizona, I put in for archery antelope hunts because I have higher draw odds. Right. It's in August. I'm just going to bring a blind out there and sit water. If I oh, draw, and sure. I have a 3% draw, but I'm like, man, like after this hunt and snore, I'm like, that's an effective way to hunt. I could do that. And even with some of these deer hunts, you could draw a archery tag in Arizona easier than a rifle tag. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm going to put in for these archery tags and maybe I'll just go sit water in August and something's going to come in as long as you don't get like a freak monsoon, you'll be hunting deer. What? Well, and I think what's funny you actually say that is it's just, I think like with, I don't know if it's just the world we live in media, whatever, but I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of disconnect sometimes between what's effective to kill and then it just what everybody thinks is cool. You know what I mean? Yep. It's hundred it, percent. It, it's cool to say I went and hiked 10 miles. Yeah, that's, that's cool. But I, I got, I commend you for being able to do that. But did you, did you, how many animals did you walk past? How many, like <laughs> as whereas me, I would rather just find a nice freaking nice ridge and glass and find animals and then go attack them rather than just say I walked 10 miles and more wore my body out again more for next year and took years off of my <laughs> yep. abilities but yeah you could it's just like that moose hunt and the guides kept telling us just stick it out just stick it out and we're all sitting there like all elk hunters from colorado going jesus i can't do this anymore i need to go find a moose <laughs> but for how the hard can you be to find it, the 1200 pounds there, there should be yeah, easy, that's right? what you would that's what you'd think and it's so thick up there they're <laughs> like oh you're not gonna see them and and then next thing you yeah. know, you finally see one and you're like, holy crap, I didn't see it until it was 40 yards from me. But yeah, that's, that's, that doing effective things. Sometimes it's harder to stick with your game plan, obviously, and follow through with what's actually effective than just doing what you think is going to work. Yeah. Tell me ahead. about the, the moose hunt. So you went to Alberta, you was a 14 day hunt. Yeah. So it was a, it was say 14, I guess it was actually 12 in the woods we had eight of us i actually got to take my dad which he's 67 and so it was a bucket list hunt for him that he never was going to be able to do and we were able to make it work for him as well it was up there you have to be guided being out of the country and so they took us in on uh, those argos way 30 or 20 20 miles back from the trailhead where we dropped in and we stayed back there for ride it and just ride it like 12 days and the only so it was a really dry year talking about your sonora thing it was a really dry year up there and hot and the moose were not they were not cooperating and it, it was grueling but it was dry and hot and they just weren't coming to calls they weren't moving like they typically do typically in a 12 day hunt you get opportunity at a few bulls and get to pick one you want and whatnot but literally only three of three of us out of eight killed because that's the only thing we saw it was so slow that the guy had actually canceled his hunt that was like a week and a half after ours he rescheduled it for this year for the guys just because it was like one of the worst years he'd seen and I talked to some other people that had hunted there and it seemed to be the same story across a lot of canada it was just that it was so dry and they had all those fires and it was just a weird year but yeah two two of the guys killed one like the third and fourth day and then i finally killed mine and going back to that what works is it was funny because we'd been doing the sitting and calling for i think it was had been six or seven days and one of the morning it was a really cold day and 
I'd been out with my dad and the guide and my dad was sold and the guide, so the guide took him back to camp. They walked back, whatever it was, a mile and a half or something like that. And I was like, and against the, I wasn't supposed to do it because you're supposed to be the guide, but I was like, <laughs> man, I'm just going to go walk some of these roads. And uh, a buddy of mine was hunting. They had him set up maybe five miles from me and I texted him and I sent him a screenshot. I was like, follow this old logging road and left anything. We'll just, maybe we'll push something towards each other. If not, we can hang out and bullshit for a little while because <laughs> we hadn't seen each other in five days and whatnot. And, and then I, I saw, so I just went off walking and then finally I'm going down this old logging cut or whatever they, these cuts they have up there and I'm walking along and, and I see something moving. And then my first thought was a wolf because we'd seen some wolves and we could shoot them because it was a gray color. And so I threw out the rifle on it. And mind you, I had been bow hunting like the first four days. And then I was like, man, if I see one, <laughs> I want to be able to put it down for sure because I haven't seen nothing. <laughs> so I picked up the I picked up the rifle and and I, I looked through the scope and it's something moving and then. And I go from thinking it's a wolf and then I see some brown. And so I thought it maybe was a bear and because my head hadn't seen a moose. And so I was, it was just so disconnected from even thinking it was a moose. I just, it just wasn't even, <laughs> and, and then finally it comes walking through and, and it comes up to, it's coming straight at me up that cut. And finally I am able to get a shot at it. It's probably... 35 yards from me, which is like, of course, I don't have my bow, got a <laughs> rifle. And, but so I shoot one, I was using one of the guides, old like bush guns, this little 300 short mat Tika that was all beat up and crafting. And he didn't have his mag and he lost his mag. So I put around in this thing, like in the front shoulder to anchor it so it wouldn't run off into the bushes. And, and it runs just straight at me like 15 yards. And so it's 10 yards from me at this point. And it's just standing there, look, just looking straight at me. And I'm like, Oh crap. <laughs> this thing. And so I'm all fumbling and it doesn't, the rifle doesn't have a mag. So I'm single shooting it. And uh, I'm all fumbling, getting another bullet out of my freaking bino harness, trying to get it, trying to get this thing loaded while this thing's just sitting here looking at me like, I'm about to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and so then finally I get another round and he, he turns broadside and put another one in him. And then he's still looking at me and I'm like, God, and then he finally fell over. But, but yeah, I know it was a, it was a super cool experience, but going back to that, sometimes you got to follow the process, but then also sometimes you got to get out and make things happen. Oh yeah. So, I'm not, I'm definitely not saying that. Cause like when I killed that bull, I actually moved 30 miles South cause we just could not, we're, so every once in a while you gotta make a change. If it's just not oh, working, doing the same thing mm -hmm. over and over again, it's just it's not worth it. You gotta make the change, and you'd be yep. surprised. Sometimes it just it pays off, and it could just be luck. I think some of it mm -hmm. is luck, right? Like walking mm -hmm. into a bull is luck, but it makes you feel like a genius when it works out. I'll tell you what, when it, you yeah. walk down a walk down a trail, and all of a sudden there's a moose down at thirty five yards, and you hammer him. Yeah, and you no, never would have got sure. him. Was that oh, the yeah. only moose? Is that the first moose you saw on that hunt? on its feet first first and last moose I, yeah first and last moose i saw so my dad was <laughs> back at camp he hears the shot and i text him i said i got one and so they hop on a quad and come up that logging road to us and we get out and me and my dad are celebrating taking pictures bullshit talking and doing the whole thing and we the guy went to go back to camp to get a chainsaw so that he could get the quad closer up to the bull so we didn't have to carry that heavy sucker too far and he so he goes back to the quad jumps on the quad 100 yards from us turns around to take off and another bull runs out so he comes back and gets us and we chase after that thing but never could get another shot on it for my dad yeah. but that yeah that was the last and there was four dudes in our camp and four guys in the other camp and i was the only one to shoot one out of our camp and it was so that's one of those <laughs> times that really shows you and test your hunting partners and everybody's mental fortitude of staying positive. And it's easy for people to get down and start getting negative and whatnot. And, but we had a good group of folks as long as we 
we were able to keep Copenhagen in camp. So it stayed out. It stayed pretty good. But yeah, it was a cool experience. And my next one to be in Alaska for sure. That's my next moose hunt. I don't know that I would go back to Alberta just because of the the terrain wasn't quite what I like. It was just all flat and thick. And so the going back to that mental side of it is just you have nowhere to you get so used to being able to just get up and at least spot animals somewhere to know yeah. that there's animals right and when you're in that situation if you don't see them 40 50 yards from you it's you don't even know they're there when elk hunting you'll hear them a ridge over bugling and you'll be like i might not be in them but they're around and uh, uh, yeah so that was it was interesting sure yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna do I want to do a float trip. That's one of my goals. I want to do a float trip for yep, moose. So my here. definitely on my high on my list of things I want to do. I just got to figure it out and do it. I, I need to probably start looking at doing one in 2026, I guess now, or 2020, yeah. maybe, maybe it's 2025. If I start now, start looking at it, get something booked. Cause I just, I want to do it before I'm, I'm 38. Now I'm just like, like you said, just yep. wearing yourself out and trying yeah, to get it done before that's... I get in my forties. And I yeah, that was a back. lot of, that's a lot of logistics. I've been like in the works of planning one. I'm trying to same type of thing, like 26, something like that, but just getting all the logistics together for that. And Man, that's sure what people don't good. realize. It's years out when you plan these trips up there. I have questions on the moose thing. I know you wouldn't call for that, but. Uh, no, yeah. So a couple things. One, are there no size restrictions up there then for the bulls? Like, There's no. no size. Okay. That's why I was like, okay, you just, so if he yeah. has antlers, you're shooting them. You're sh- yeah, you should. Ideally, the guide said he wanted us all to walk away with 50 inch bulls, but which is that's a good bull for up there is a 50 inch bull. But it this year just didn't pan out that way. So we all basically were uh, the first down. thing we saw. No, no, <laughs> the, the funny down. part about it is one of my buddies that went that he's not super into roughing it and doing all that stuff and he was like he's i don't care what you guys do i'm shooting the first one i see I don't, as long as it's got antlers i'm shooting and he ends up shooting the biggest one of the whole trip and being able to leave early and stuff and it was pretty funny but yeah that we picked up there just because of the we had a couple my dad and one of my buddy's dads were going for older it was a trip that they could still go do without too, yeah it wasn't super physically demanding wall and, tents um, etc yeah, exactly. Wall yeah. tents and Argos and quads and stuff taking you to different areas and not having to really cover too too much country. So it, for that purpose, it's a great hunt. We drove up there. We took trailers and drove all our meat back. And it was a uh, logistically, it was an easy way to go kill a moose because obviously here, it's, I don't know when I'll ever kill a mo- or get a moose tag in Colorado and before they're all dead from the wolves anyways. So we'll... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so that so yeah it was it was a good trip for what we did but i i definitely would you know like a little more of an adventure for me a lot of it's just in the adventure of the hunt so the other question i had was logistics what are the logistics like like for this hunt you drove up you said what was like a what does it cost for an alberta hunt right so i know i could do moose in alaska for around four to five before tax term mm-hmm. before flight. That's getting me into yep. the bush. That's getting a guide. That's getting me in there. Right. That's right. I'll probably be eight to nine when I'm said and done with everything. Mm-hmm. But what does something like this cost to go to Alberta? Your biggest cost up there is the, you're basically paying the guide to do all that for you. So you're, I think we were out, I think it was, I think it was about 12, which was part of the reason we did it. It was, one of the cheapest moose hunts that wasn't a self-guided in the bush hunt in Alaska, right? So it was, yeah, it was right at 12, I'd say, out the door for everything. But that also included, they they get your tags, they do everything for you, just show up and mm-hmm. food's there, the, the whole thing, right? But that also includes, they basically unlimited wolf tags, if you get an opportunity on that, they included bear hunts and that but we didn't get to go do any of that because we hunted for moose the whole time and mm-hmm. weren't successful so if we would have killed out early on moose we could have went and hunted bear as well and w- but uh, but yeah that's uh those canadians are crazy though so they're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're an interesting group of folks that's uh, when i got to watch a canadian chase a black bear up the tree out of camp which was something i'd never seen before he literally chased him up a tree with an axe 
<laughs> po- poking him in the ass, trying to scare him. He was like, "You got to scare him so they don't ever come back again." He's, you don't scare him so bad that but he'll be back in camp next year or whatever. But, but yeah, it was a cool experience. But yeah, logistically, it was super easy. Um, anybody that just wants to go kill a moose, you know, um, good guided ones are twenty five, thirty thousand dollars, you know, yeah. for that. And so that was never an option for me. So this one worked out pretty well. Yeah. That's cool, but, man. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. yeah, it was good stuff. But yeah, and it, but anyways, too, on this, we'll talk about that mule deer hunt. There's all kinds of other hunts we could talk about, but this one's just cool because I like the kids' stuff. That's, that gets me amped up more than anything these days. Uh, yeah, I've got five it. of my own, so I, I know all about the kids' stuff. Yeah. yeah, you find yourself not even caring to hunt anymore. I'm like, man, I need that. Exactly. Yeah. I got to focus on myself here. <laughs> this is the, the first uh, buck I killed in Sonora since 2019. Yeah. So just, yeah. But we've killed, I think, eight deer since then. But it's all been my oh, books. Really? Right? But just, like, it, honestly, you get a kid a deer, it's harder than getting yourself a deer. So, oh, a hundred times. So it's just yeah. as fun for me. It's more challenging in your teaching. So, yeah, tell me about it. So, you, your yeah. nephew, you got him his second buck in Colorado, yep. public land, right? Yep, public land. So he's he's in Texas. It's my uh, sister's kid, and so he's been. This is the second trip up. Twenty three, what? Oh, Twenty two season. They came up, and we went up to northern Colorado and killed a little, just a little three by. That was his first deer on more of a zero point type of unit for youth, and we're able to get him a, a decent one. And we got him and my brother in law. They hunt a bunch in Texas, but we got him just completely, just enamored in mountain hunting yeah so they both went back and trained all year both freaking got in shape lost a bunch of weight got the gear got all ready and for this year and we were able to get a tag in a little bit better unit and we and it more of a high country hunt rather than it was a third season hunt yeah, we had snow. It wasn't this year was a little dry early on in that area. Yeah. We had decent snow already up higher. We were hunting in that. We were camped somewhere around 9,000 feet, I believe. And then we shot that buck somewhere around 11, something like that. Oh, you're up there. Uh, yeah, no, we were up pretty decent. It was 10 and a half, 11, somewhere in that band right there in that Glassman type of elevation. And we, so I, and I'd never hunted this unit before. It was actually a buddy of mine was like, y'all should go check this out and see if you can get a tag for it. I'd never hunted the area. So as soon as he actually got the tag on it, he didn't draw it in the first draw and picked it up in the Colorado does a, like a secondary draw now. So a bunch of any tags that weren't allocated, I assume is goes on to that secondary draw, but they allocate all of them to youth first. And then anything that youth don't draw, it goes to whoever else is in the pot, but so he was able to pick up that unit in the secondary draw. And so I, and then I ended up getting one on the leftover list. So I had a tag in my pocket too, just so it's just in case or whatever, but the main focus was on him, but I just went out uh, a little bit. They live in Texas. So I was able to do some scouting prior to them coming up and find us camp spots and areas where, you know, for especially the hunts with the kids like that, it's nice to have a campsite that is that you can do a good amount of glassing from for me. That way we can get there a couple days early, cover miles of country just with our eyes and trying to pick up animals and have good game plans for open and morning. And so that's what we did. We went two days early, an area that I had e-scouted and then went and scouted myself and whatnot. And we luckily enough, the first, the first evening we were there, we got camp set up and found um, a bunch of does and then had two, two nice bucks come out and up in the Aspens, maybe a mile and a half from us, something like that, up the drainage. And they came out and then they were there the next morning as well, which was the day before opening season. And then even that evening, they were there and we have all these in this area we're at, you can drive to the camp and whatnot. So there's people just coming in by the groves like normal. And 
we're like trying not to be obvious of where we're looking. I'm like, yeah. I'm like don't look up there too long while these guys. Yeah, you turn your glass while these guys drive by. Because I'm like, they'll freak it if they look. If they think we're looking at something, they'll look up there too. So people don't. Look, they don't want to do their own work. And then so we had a game plan. I was so it was how it was is we had a basically a drainage coming down the mountain on the east facing slope that had all the aspens that's where they'd been coming out on the morning a little bit after the sun started hitting the side of the hill they would start coming out and so we uh came up with a game plan to get up that next morning open the morning hike in early get on the adjacent ridge to the east and try to find some openings where we could see into that area where we'd been seeing them and try to catch them and be within that 300 yard range from them and so we get up early there's a couple other guys at the same trailhead that we were using to get go in that direction and uh, those guys on <laughs> and mind you i've got so it's my it's my nephew who's 13 and then my son who's nine with me and we're packing in through six eight inches of snow to get up maybe a thousand foot of a climb, something like that. And nothing too crazy. It wasn't like terrible country. It was relatively easy, but the, uh, some other guys were in front of us and they went downhill and went down and set a ridge down from us. And we went up the ridge away from them and uh, we get up there and it's, the boys are cold and they, nobody makes a good boot for a nine-year-old that keeps them warm it seems uh, that i've been able to find yeah. so <laughs> maybe sorrels if you get sorrels but oh yeah you could probably yeah. do that like an actual snow those, boot yeah like a snow like a sorrel but then your feet are gonna sweat it all depends i don't know kids i don't know my kids thrive right. i'm like how are you wearing that like how are you not miserable but i don't know <laughs> and the, yeah, that's, but that's what you've gotten them for my boys originally when i was getting them was like military surplus boots like women's boots uh -huh. for, for when they were young. And then now, I mean, yeah. they just all of a sudden, I mean, they hit 13, all of a sudden they just showed well, up. They're, and they're, they're, I'm passing them down my boots now, honestly, because they're both right. like a size 11, or I think I'm wearing like a size 11 and a half, 12 boot, depending on the boot. So it's passing right, down my right. boots now. But yeah, originally I was just getting them, whatever you can get them at like REI. It's like my nine year old's hunting right now, or he's wearing like a trail shoe. Like, a, I don't know what those would be. Like, some hippie trail shoe from REI. Yeah, That's all you can really get. Right. You can't go out and get them like a crispy, but I guess you can get them right. women's boots. Women's boots work. Oh well, yeah. My, for the early season stuff, my boy has just like keen hiking boots. That Keen, that's what I'm talking about. Keen hippie, but that's what I'm, my kids are. <laughs> <Yeah. from now. laughs> hey, if, like if, it's an REI, if, if it's an REI, it's hippie. Now. Yeah. It's like a trail, <laughs> a keen trail shoes of my kids. So they all went through those. And like I said, then I went to the military boot, like a woman's military boot. And then I bumped yeah. them up into real boots the last couple of years. Yeah, it's like those hippie tripods you were kicking. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so going, at, so we get in there early and you know how it is when it's, you're all, we're all in snow, it's early. Mm -hmm. You get up there, everybody's on and off layers doing the whole thing and you get up there and finally sit still for 45 minutes sitting in the snow and everybody's, hell, I, I, I have hell keeping my feet warm and so I'm sitting there freaking, toes are freaking cold and we're sitting there waiting for the sun to come up some and it finally comes up. So we were able to move a little more into position because I didn't want to just go bombing in there blinded onto the ridge that faces where we were wanting to hunt. And so we hung out on the, the front of the ridge where we weren't disrupting anything until, until we started to get a little daylight to where I could start creeping in and being able to glass that hillside without just walking in with that's another part is with kids and everything else it's you've got like a herd of animals behind you trying to get in on animals <laughs> yeah, my kids are like i am whispering <laughs> i am this is i'm whispering right now i'm like oh my god shut <laughs> yeah. up. everybody can hear you stop oh <laughs> uh, yeah i'm telling you that's the, like my nephew and my son and they're like best friends too and they're just like it just and i have to and i have to apologize to them afterwards because i'm like look guys i'm not trying to be a total prick <laughs> but y'all gotta <laughs> shut up just shut up <laughs> unless i ask you something don't talk <laughs> and anyways we we sneak in and get over and spot some does so we're sitting there just waiting waiting to see assuming those bucks are going to come back out and so I'm sitting there and my boys, just his feet are just freezing and he's 
Do you have the boot warmers in there? The hand warmers in his boots or no? No, I my my an asshole dad. I didn't put them in there. No, I yeah, uh, they, they, those help a little bit with do, the kids. Stuff. They do help. And and honestly, the weather had been pretty nice, and I thought that we would warm up pretty quick, but it wasn't. So him and my nephew are just freezing, but my nephew's just gun ho to freaking get a buck, and so he's so my boy. I'm like, hey. He's almost in tears. His, his feet are freezing so bad. He's like, I can't feel them. They're freaking. <laughs> so good so for I'm him. like, yeah, oh, it's great for so him. Good. No, it is. It happened to him the year before, and they got they got to kill a buck, and it it's good lessons for him. They got to have a little grit. Maybe that's why I don't put the hand warmers in there. But the, <laughs> so I take my boy a hundred yards back to the east on the front side of the ridge we're sitting, and I build him a campfire mm-hmm. to warm like to warm up. And I'm sitting there and I'm getting the fire going and whatnot, throwing some logs on. And my brother-in-law texts me and he's big buck came out. Please advise. And, and I'm like, <laughs> shoot it. What's the kid shooting? Seven millimeter. Oh eight. That's he's a perfect fire. cartridge. Oh yeah. I love that gun. I actually, I'm the one that convinced them to buy it. I just, I have one myself. I've shot elk and mule deer and everything else with that. I love it. And the kids can shoot it, but the, so, but in text back, it, it only came out for a second and went up the mountain from us. And so I tell my boy and he's sitting there freezing, trying to warm up. And so I hand him my in reach and I'm like, Hey, look, like I'm <laughs> going back over there. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, if we don't come back, just push this button and do not leave this spot. I was like, whatever, ha- do not leave. And he's like, all right, cool. And so I sneak back around to them and they show me where he went. And so I'm like, all right, I'm going to go up this ridge and see if I can find another opening to spot this thing up the hill. And also going back to that, them, they're being Texas hunters. One thing that I had to learn coming to Colorado was like, you like the level of being ready is you have to always be ready to shoot. Don't ever think you're going to have a minute to mm-hmm. get your gun set up or, you know what I'm saying? And so that bucket came out and they just weren't set up to shoot. And mm-hmm. so they didn't get the opportunity. Cause this is what I told him. I was like, man, shoot. As soon as you see, shoot. If, if you want it, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so I go up the hill to go try to find another spot to get on this buck. And I just, hooked it up the hill quick as fast as I could to try to cut him off. And I told them to stay there in case he followed some does back towards them. And I get up, up the ridge, maybe two, 300 yards. And I finally find another opening and I find the buck and he's up there just hanging with these does. And so I text my brother-in-law and I'm like, Hey, like y'all follow my tracks and just get up here as fast as you can. I don't know how long he's going to hang. And, uh, so I'm sitting there and I have a tag in my pocket. That's a nice buck. Then I'm sitting there going, they don't make it. <laughs> I, might, I might just go ahead. I might just go ahead. Uncle, and uncle of the year award right there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so I, so the next thing I know, I'm sitting there and just waiting on them waiting. And then I hear a bunch of huffing and puffing behind me as my nephew. And he'd already ran, left his dad behind because he, he was so jacked <laughs> up. <laughs> and, and his dad was like, just go. I can't keep up. Just go. And so he gets up there and he comes just in, just like pouring sweat, just freaking. And I was like, all right, sit down. Just sit down for a minute because he's all like, where's it at? I'm going to shoot. And I'm like, no, you're not. Just sit down for a minute. Get, get your composure because it, it was a 300 and maybe 15 yard shot on your you, there was no like areas to be prone so it was leaning against trees type of shot and so he gets his breath back to him and whatnot and by that time his dad had made it up there which was cool and and his dad has a like a i think he had like he bought like a christensen arm but he didn't have quite as good a scope and they hadn't really sighted in for that distance so i was like here you can use my gun and which i've been shooting all year shooting my boy shot stuff with it i'd shot stuff with it everything as I knew was great. He takes my gun, gets it, shoots, shoots this buck. I can tell it hits him, but I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at him and I can tell he's hit. The does run off. He moves downhill 
but on the opposite direction of the doe. So I'm like, he's hit. I'm like, try, can you see him? Try to get another round and he shoots again and misses. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? Because the kid can shoot. Like, he, he's a good shot. And and then I'm like, well, send him. Keep shooting. <laughs> and he shoots him again. <laughs> drops it. He drops him at that point. Rolls down the hill or whatever. We're all celebrating. Doing all happy and stuff. And then I we're all sitting there, like, just chit-chatting. And then I'm like, Waylon. Because <laughs> that's my son's name. <laughs> and I'm like, he's still down the mountain. <laughs> so he's just down there at the mountain sitting at the campfire. So... I take off and haul ass down the mountain to go back to hill. And I get back down to the hill and he's, I was like, did you hear a shoot and whatnot? And he's like, oh yeah, dude, y'all didn't hear me yell woo after you shot? And I was like, no, we didn't. <laughs> and, and he goes, yeah, I was going to give y'all about another 20 minutes to get here. And then I was going to go ahead and push that button. I was like, no, oh, son, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, I was like, that was for like, if we never came back. <laughs> and so anyways, we all pack up and go over there to the buck. And is that shot that he dropped him, he hit him right in the eyeball. I saw and, that picture. Uh, later on. He, I was so curious. He, I wanted to hear. Yeah. So he, so the first shot he'd hit him in the hip and the other shot, he hit him right in the eyeball. And, um, I'm like, what in the hell? So to jump forward, I had shot my gun after that and at a hundred yards, it, I guess it got knocked and it was like shooting eight inches probably to the right at a hundred yards. And so at 300, mm -hmm. I was like, that makes sense. So why we were having such issues because I'm that probably don't shoot my guns as much as I should. And yeah, but, but anyways, yeah. So we did that thing and then we were able to pack it out pretty okay. Pack out. It wasn't too rough on the boys. I made the boys carry a good amount of it and because it's they want to go I, I believe they should carry their weight but yeah no so that was that was really the gist of it got him a freaking it was a cool two by two like a, just a big old two by two real interesting i thought it was know, a three probably. so it's a two by it's wide though or no it, no it was a three by two sorry one of them had a fork you're right I, yeah I it's got, it's on the right. pic, i got the picture here yeah on the yeah on the right side he's three yeah it's kind of like a split g2 almost yeah, and then it, yeah, yeah, and then it, yeah, it's still it's like a, a, it looks super wide. And I saw the picture. I'm like, man, did that kid shoot that buck in the eye? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to ask because something's uh, happened. You just don't talk about it. I wasn't sure if you're gonna say, yeah, I shot him in the eye because his eyeball's like missing. So <laughs> it's just, yeah. that's what happened. And shooting with kids, man, things happen out there. And anyone tells me that their kids a crack shot and hits every animal they shoot at is probably not telling the truth because I've had some rodeos. A lot of killed animals. My boys have killed a lot of stuff now. And they're getting a lot. The older they get, the better they're getting. But especially those right. first few years, man, we had some. I'm yeah. like looking at them like, were you even, were your eyes open? Like, how did you do <laughs> that bad, son? Yeah, uh, you know? we, we've had plenty of those. And I, and I tell them, I'm like, you take try to take a couple things from it. One is that you practice as much as you should have. And two, we didn't make sure the gun was on before we went on that hunt because we've been hunting so much. Yep. And then, and then three, this, the, uh, some people get feel bad because they made a bad shot or whatever. And I'm like, man, it just, as long as you put in the work, this sh shit happens. And uh, it goes back to that key thing too. Just keep shooting until it hits the ground. That's my theory. Oh yeah. Uh, once you pull, once the trigger has been pulled at that yeah. point, it's, you're going to shoot, right? Like you're going to try and kill this animal, especially if you get a bad shot. Sometimes you just yep. got to put one in. I had a deer. I don't, know, I don't know if I've told the story or not before. I shot a mule deer at 430 yards up 11,000 foot elevation here in the Sierras in California. Yeah. And I watched that deer run 20 feet and just dump over dead. And I'm like, these dead. And I'm with my kid at the time. My kid was probably nine at the time, 10. Yeah. And we had weird backpack hunting. So I'm like, we pack everything up and we hike over there. And it must've been 30 minutes later. We walk up there and that deer is sideways and his foot is straight out. And I'm like, that's a really strange position. And that buck, I got 10 foot from it. It stood up. It lived yeah. for 30 minutes. Had to be 30 minutes. It stood up and started running towards a canyon, and I pulled him right up his butt and killed him. And it was a mess. I mean, you never want to clean that, but you had. No. But it was like, I'm either going to shoot this buck or it's going to go die in the bottom of this canyon down here, and I'm never going to get yep. it. And I shot him going over a rise, put it right up his butt and killed him. Because once you do the deed, once you've shot him, you really do need to put rounds in the animal until it's dead. Because it's going to die, okay. but it might be two miles from where you are. So even if you do get one in its back hip, it's better than – putting one just a little bit of liver or a little bit of a lung and especially with elk man deer are a little bit those coos deer those things they die like a coyote but 
Yeah. You, know, you shoot an yeah. elk, you really just are putting, start, once you fire, you be, another round should be right back in that chamber, ready to go again, because they're just you know, and, tough and as nails, elk, man. And they just like to just, once they're shot, for some reason, just like to go into the nastiest shit in the world. And so, yeah. if I can stop, if Sometimes I can stop they just stand them, there. going. Sometimes yeah, you shoot yeah. them and they just stand there. And you're just like, what? Yeah. You even shot? Shoot them again. You just, and they're all kill shots. And they just stand there dead on his feet to stand there. They just have so yeah. much blood in their body. But man, yeah. that was really no, cool. You're you're a great you're a great podcast. You're a great interview. We, oh, we got to do it again. Yeah. yeah, dude. That was, yeah, that was fun. So there's all kinds of stories. But dude, to go back to that, so I just ordered your, I was looking for a new tripod. And you can edit this out or whatever, but I, I was looking for a new tripod and that's how I came across you guys was just doing a little research. And so that hunt, actually it wasn't that hunt. It was a hunt out East it was the first time I'd used it, but that hunt, I used it a lot. And I, I beat the shit out of my stuff. If having a gun that was shooting eight inches to the right, doesn't tell you that, but so far it's held up great and I really like it. So it's been a good setup. I got the taller one, the what is that? The is it your BC? Is that AD. what it is? The AD. The AD. Okay, AD. So is the taller one. Yeah. And you're running yeah, my, so you're my I, panhead too. No, the panhead. Yep. Yep. And so I'm I'm six yeah. three, and I and so finding one that I trust is going to be tall enough and then still stable and all that kind of crap when it's all extended like that is always a concern of mine. But but yeah, the way you do it with the more of the weight down low and whatnot seemed to really was more stable than any of them I've used. I've used Outdoorsman and Siri and some of those guys. And not to say those aren't good, but I, I really liked how it was, it just felt more anchored to the ground when I was using it. Cause we had, I was running a 65 millimeter spotter on it and we were having like 30, 40 mile an hour winds on this knob we're on. Cause I mm -hmm. picked a crappy spot to uh, camp. <laughs> but so we were in a ton of wind all the time and I never, never blew over once never so it was i was pretty impressed and it was i like it so i'm that's probably awesome. gonna pick up one of your one of your gun clamps next. yeah that's, i was gonna tell you that dude that gun sick. clamp is just it's money dude like i had a guy text me i have a, his podcast comes out this week robert clark he's like, dude we're two two elk two dead this week that gun clamp that thing's awesome it's like 500 yard yeah. shots man and we killed three elk over 300 on i killed down in mexico we probably killed five or six animals in mexico last week off and it's just that gun clamp is really bitching people are gonna well i'm being able to just swap it out quick is nice for me it's, it's class, arca swiss you know? arc is built into it it's billet machine it's not a giant clamp which is nice so it's it's light and mm -hmm. it's small so it's like, like 9.7 ounces and we've already, we're only pre-ordering right now. I think we've sold like a hundred of them in the first week, just pre-orders. Right. People are going to, yeah. we're going to sell. Once they start getting them, it's going to be like the LP pan head and the tripods. Everyone's going to buy them. It's just, yeah. it's when you hold yeah. it, you're like, oh, it's a very quality part. We, yeah. you take a giant block of aluminum machine into that thing and it's uh, it turns yeah. out really nice, man. No, I was, I was pretty impressed with all your stuff. I did the Bino mount with the. Quick connect adapter. It fit right into my freaking Swaro SLCs. It, it, everything is great. So I was super happy with all of it so far. So it's been good, but yeah. It's awesome. Dude, so, uh, well, cool. where can we, do you want people to find, are you public on Instagram or are you private? No, I'm private, man. I'm not a, I'm not very come. influential. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I, you ain't going to catch me hashtagging nothing. That's for sure. I have a daily job that I, that's where I make money. But, but yeah, no, I'm always, if there's ever, I, I love helping people though. So if anyone ever wants to bring in kids to Colorado and need some help or advice, I'm all about helping kids. I'm not, if you're a grown man, I don't really care if you, I'd rather you not call me, you can go figure it out. But if it's about helping a kid, I'll, uh, I'll give you a few, help you with some spots or whatnot. But yeah. yeah so you, <laughs> so, you got any kids, get them a tag. Remington is willing to yeah. help you out. <laughs> yeah, but. no doubt. But yeah, man. But yeah, it was a good. Thanks for having me on and all that. So it's good meeting you. So yeah, let's so, do it again. Yeah, no doubt. Let's, let's let's do it again, bro. Thank you. Yeah.